started making some videos for my fifth grade students so they could learn online during this crazy time. And then I decided that I should make them public so everyone could learn. So my hope is to reach as many students, teachers, parents, anyone who needs help during this crazy time of learning math. If you have any topics you want me to cover, please email Connelly math at home at gmail.com and just pay attention that's an O there, not an E. Um, I've been happy to cover as many topics as I can in the time that I'm home. It's keeping me busy, um, away from eating all of the cheese and crackers in the refrigerator. So I'm happy about that and I really like helping. So hopefully we can um, get this out to as many students as possible. So in the previous videos on this playlist, I did multiplication strategies for breaking both numbers apart, keeping one number whole, and then changing one factor and adjusting. So I'm just gonna bring all three of those strategies together so you can see them next to each other. If you need to see the strategy taught in depth, please watch the other videos on this playlist. You can find them. I wrote multiplication really big in the title to help you find them easily on the channel. So let's think about 38. Groups of, and if you watch the other videos, this stands for groups of 38 groups of 26. So 38 boxes of 26 oranges. And I'm gonna see if I can fit all three strategies on here. It might be kind of tough, but let's give it a try. So the first strategy that I wanna talk about is breaking both numbers apart. And I'm gonna show that on the area model. Again, all strategies are taught in depth in um, their own videos. So if you need a review of each one, you can check there. So when we break both numbers apart, we're breaking them up by place value. This, the width here represents 38. So 30 plus eight is 38. Um, when we're trying to find the area of something, it's length times width. So this is one reason why we call it the area model for multiplication. I'm gonna split up my other number into um, tens and ones as well so that I have 20 and 6 and the reason that we break this up is because we're making some multiplication um, equations that are easier for us than trying to do 38 times 26 all at once. So we split it up by place value. We have a lot of numbers that I can draw that smiley face inside of. That means they're friendly numbers. They're easy to work with. So in this first larger box here we represent 30 groups of 20. So 30 boxes is the width, 20 is the length of this box here, or sorry, this rectangle here. Um, and so we know how to multiply three times two, so we know how to multiply 30 times 20. So we have 600 oranges so far. So, so far I have 30 boxes and they each have 20 oranges in them. And I want to make sure that I um, put 26 oranges in all 38 boxes. So in those 30 boxes, I've added 20 oranges. I need six more oranges in each box. So let me make this just a little bit bigger so we can have space. Um, so 30 is opposite sides are equal in a rectangle. So the width here is 30. The length here is six. So this box here, sorry, this rectangle here, the area of this would be represented by 30 times six. So I'm taking those 30 boxes and I'm making sure that there's 26 oranges in each 30 box, each of 30 boxes. So we know three times six, so we know 30 times six is 180. So, so far I have 30 boxes. I put 26 in each box and that means that so far I have 780 oranges that have been put into the boxes. So I added my subproduct 600 plus 180. And parents, if you're confused why we would ever teach this, we're making this flexible. We can do it in our brains. We've made easier problems and then 600 plus 180 is something students can do in their heads. So we only have 30 boxes full so far. So next what we have to do is make sure that we take the other eight boxes from 38 and they get full with 26 oranges each. So in this rectangle here, we know opposite sides in a rectangle are equivalent. So that means that the length of this piece is the same as the length of this piece. So when kids are trying to decide what 
you multiply in here, we look over here, 20. So this would be 20 times the width is 8. So we're thinking about area as length times width. So this box is 20 times 8. So in um, 8 boxes, I put 20 oranges. Let me put this in the correct order so when I'm talking about it. Order doesn't matter, but just so it's clear. I have eight boxes. I'm putting 20 more oranges in um, each of the eight boxes. And the kids know eight times two, so they know eight times 20. Um, then down here, when we think about what is the length of this piece and what's the width of this piece, we have to look opposites. So we have eight, bo eight more boxes. We put 20 oranges in each. I want 26 oranges in each. So I'm gonna take those eight boxes and I'm gonna multiply it by six. I'm putting six more oranges in each box and that gives me 48 more oranges. So then we think about 160 plus 48 and that's how many oranges are in those eight boxes. And again, this is something that students are able to do. So when I have 780 oranges in the 30 boxes, then 208 oranges in the eight boxes. I can add these two together. 988 oranges total. So this strategy is when we break both numbers apart, using the area model as a representation is helpful to help students keep track of all of the parts. Another strategy is called keeping one number whole. So instead of breaking up um, both numbers, we're just gonna break up one number. Okay, so I'm gonna choose to keep 38 whole because I, I see that there's a two here and I'm multiplying by two, which is gonna represent the, then we'll, repre then we'll multiply by 20, um, is something I can do in my head. So when we think about this over here, we are going to do 38. I'm gonna keep this whole, that means I'm not splitting it apart. Then I'm gonna split the 26 into tens and ones. So first I'm gonna take all 38 boxes and I'm gonna put 20 oranges in each one, all at once, okay? So students can do 38 times two or they can add 38 two times. So I'm gonna do times two, so um, 30 times two is 60, eight times two is 16. So I know I have 38 times two is 76. But since it's 38 times 20, students know that they'll multiply that 76 times 10. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took 38 boxes, I put 20 oranges in each one. Now I'm still keeping 38 whole, just 38, <laughs> I'm still keeping 38 whole, and I need to put six more oranges in all 38 boxes. So that's what's happening there. In fourth grade, the students might want to break this down into um, 38 times 2, 38 times 2, 38 times 2. So it's something that's easier for them to work with. Um, they already did the work here too. 38 times 2 is 76. So they would um, do that three times because 2, 4, 6. But as we're moving to fifth grade, we want them thinking about being flexible thinkers and doing the multiplication that they know in their brain. So we know 30 times 6 is 180. 8 times 6 is 48. So we have 180 plus 48. So 180 plus 48. 180 plus 48. Okay, so now do we see the 38 that we kept whole? We broke 26 into parts. I put 20 oranges first in all 38 boxes, and then I put six oranges in all 38 boxes. I used 760 oranges and then 228 oranges. So how many oranges total are in all of the boxes? 988. And quickly, I'll show you on the area model what that might look like. So if we keep 38 whole, we will not split this up like we did here. We will split it up over here. So times 20 and times six. So 38 times 20 would be represented here. We're thinking about the area of this whole space. 
That's why we combine it at the end. 38 times 6 is 228. So that's what your area model would look like when you're keeping one number whole. I go over in depth that they can split this up other ways in the keeping one number whole video. So check that out. Um, if your student isn't ready to do 38 times 20, they can do 38 times 10 and 38 times 10. So make sure you check out that video because I go over it um, a little more in depth there. So we have breaking both numbers apart with the area model. We have keeping one number whole and this is what it would look like on the area model. And the last strategy that I went over, I want to show you, um, is he, uh, changing one factor and then adjusting, which some people might refer to as making an easier problem. So I was hoping to have enough space to show you all three at once, but I ordered a, a whiteboard <laughs> for um, ages like five to seven, so it's kind of small. Anyways, when we're um, keeping when we're changing one factor, we want to look for equations where it, it would be a good strategy. And this equation here, or it's an expression right now because it doesn't have an equal sign, but this one lends itself to this strategy because 38 is so close to 40. So we want to look for um, chances to use this strategy. And we also want to be flexible math thinkers. You don't use the same strategy every single time. You think about what would be the best strategy and be the most efficient to solve. So in this case, this actually could be pretty efficient because there's not a ton of steps. So I'm going to round 38 up to 40 because that is a friendly number. I like multiplying with friendly numbers and I will keep 26 the same. So what just happened here is I took, um, I'm supposed to have 38 boxes of 26, but I'm making 40 boxes of 26. Okay, so that's my 40th box. And in each box, there's 26 oranges. I'm not gonna draw all 40, that'd be insane. Children, you do not need to do this. I'm just modeling what's happening so you understand. So up here, we have 40 times 26. I changed 38 to 40 because this is a number that could be a little bit easier to multiply by. So when I think about um, 40 times 20, I know that that's 800. And then 40 times 6 is 240. So I get 1,040 oranges. Let me just double check my math. <laughs> so uh, 40 times 20 is 800. 6 times 40 is 240. So I get 1,040 which you see is more than I need. It's more than I need because I added those two extra boxes of 26. So now, after I change one factor, I have to adjust back. I need to take out two boxes of 26. So, two extra boxes of 26 need to get taken out. So, I'm going to Multiply my two extra boxes of 26 to see what I need to take out. So 2 times 20 is 40, plus 12, so 52. This is not part of this. Um, and then I'm just going to subtract back. The reason I'm subtracting back is because I added these, from 38 to 40, I added those two extra boxes. Now I have to adjust and take them back out. And you see the extra, the 52 extra oranges down here. So I line this up by um, place value, but I think that I want to do my subtraction away from this mess because there's a lot going on. So I'm going to take this and subtract out the 52 extra oranges that I used when I added the two extra boxes. There's a video on using the standard algorithm for subtraction as well. And look at what I end up with, 988 oranges. So this last strategy is when you are thinking about landmark numbers, those friendly numbers with a smiley face in it. If the equation lends itself to it, you can try the strategy. You just need to make sure you adjust back so that you can find your final answer for the actual equation. Okay, so those three strategies I went over in depth in their own videos on this multiplication playlist. Make sure you check them out. 
it's helpful to see all three together um, and start practicing them. I hope this helped you and I hope you learned a lot about multiplication. Um, this is taught in fourth grade and then we review it and refine it in fifth grade before learning the standard algorithm. Okay, see you soon. Bye.